Gemma from Generation Strength. I'm a personal trainer and strength coach and today I want to talk to you about seven very small tweaks that you can make to your daily habits to improve your health and upgrade your lifestyle. is aimed at remote workers, digital nomads, entrepreneurs and for those of you that spend a lot of time working in the office and you're not looking for a complete lifestyle overhaul but you do want some simple effective strategies so that you can start prioritizing your health right now. I've written a blog post that goes along with this video and you can find the link to the description below. It's complete with scientific references and if you find value in this video don't forget to like it and subscribe for more content like this in the future. What you'll notice about these seven habit upgrades is that the key is to help you maintain balance. So you're going to be taking a closer look at your sleep, at your sleep environment, what you eat, where you eat, how you move, and also your work boundaries. Now the word balance gets overused and it can be quite an overwhelming term. It's certainly not something that I have mastered. And I am a firm believer that if you want to be successful, sometimes you're not really going to be that balanced. Actually, this is a quote from Rich Dad Poor Dad, where the author talks about financial habits. So if you haven't read that book yet, I strongly recommend it. So whilst balance is not the goal, checking in on ourselves and really assessing any areas of our life that we're overdoing it, which could be work or having one too many takeaways or maybe binge watching Netflix, and then also assessing the areas of our life that we're neglecting. Maybe that's managing your sleep, not moving as much as you want to, not cooking healthy meals. To make this really simple and visual, I've come up with a bucket theory. I'm not sure if it's been used before, I've not come across it yet. Tony Robbins has his pyramid of mastery, but I do better with even fluor, so I have my buckets. If we think about life in terms of a series of buckets, and each bucket represents and reflects a specific area of your life, one could be work, one could be social connections and relationships, we have spirituality, creativity, mental well-being, physical health, also, maybe you have additional buckets, maybe you love to travel, maybe you like to build things with your hands and you have a craft bucket. However many buckets we have, we can't equally fill them up at the same time. We're never going to have a perfect synchronicity of filling up all our buckets. So it is important to pay attention to which buckets are overflowing. Maybe that's work or watching too much Netflix. And then also paying attention to which buckets we're neglecting. Usually those are the things that we feel and we say that we're too busy for, so things like our physical health and our mental well-being. As a fellow human, I don't want to say which areas of life I think are more important than others, but as an experienced health coach and personal trainer, I do believe that physical health is one of the buckets that should never be neglected for too long. Nothing else will work in the long run if you don't start prioritising your health bucket. So things like movement, walking, cooking healthy food, lifting weights, meditating, yoga, eating at the table and stretching, these are things that are fundamental to a healthy body. Unfortunately, many of us don't prioritise our physical health. And when we don't prioritise, we get sick, we gain weight, we feel demotivated, we lose energy, we start to have digestive issues, we become exhausted, some of us may start living in pain, and we definitely become more over-caffeinated. And if we really ignore this, we start to develop some pretty serious health conditions and consequences from neglecting our physical body. Well, you might be thinking, I wish that I had time to work out four times a week, or batch cook, or go on long walks, or take a yoga class, or sleep eight hours a day, and, and meditate every morning. And I get you, sometimes taking care of the body can feel like a full-time job. Actually, it's my full-time job, and it can be hard work. And the body can feel very high maintenance at times. But it's absolutely worth it to address your health. Now you don't have to be in amazing shape and start juicing and waking up at 6am and doing yoga in your living room and starting calisthenics. All you have to do is aim for a slightly better or slightly more than what you're currently doing right now. And that's how habits stick. Move slightly more than you're doing right now, even if it's only 100 steps. Eat slightly better than you are right now, even if it's just a piece of fruit or a handful of veggies in one meal. Have slightly better habits. Choose just one and make it stupidly simple to implement. Improve your sleep quality by just a fraction. These small changes are going to make a huge difference over time. I'm going
going to show you some easy to implement, very simple small changes that you can start making today that don't require you to become an athlete overnight. So without further ado, here are my seven small but mighty upgrades to better health. Habit number one, breaking the soda chain. Sugar gives us energy, sure, but it's also responsible for rapid fluctuations in energy levels. And the productive work you might squeeze out of a can of Coke is going to last far less than the crash that you feel afterwards. We end up riding this blood sugar roller coaster and it ends up affecting our energy, our mood and our productivity. Now if you're thinking, well that's fine because I only drink sugar free, while well, diet sodas are not much better. Subbing out real sugar for artificial sugar may actually be better for the waistline in theory, but research shows that the sweeteners lead to digestive issues, sometimes more cravings than eating real sugar, brain fog and have also been shown to be quite addictive. Now, I'm not here to label artificial sweeteners as the devil, but I do think that it's important to take a look at your relationship to fizzy drinks or caloric beverages in general, especially if you are consuming more than you would like to. If quitting cold turkey seems unreasonable, how about reducing it? Here are two tips that you can try. First tip, cut down by one soda per week or by day, depending on how difficult this is for you. Choose a time of day that you will miss it the least. Tip number two, drink a glass of water for every glass of soda you drink. Alternating water with your soda drink will not only keep you more hydrated, but you'll be carrying so much liquid around that you will naturally drink less soda. Make it a big glass of water, not a shot of water. To take this a step further, buy only the amount of cans that you're going to consume and don't keep extras in the cupboard. I can speak for myself when I say that I apply this rule to chocolate, I can't have it in the house unless I'm going to consume it within 24 hours, and it always runs out too soon, but it's always a little bit too late to go to the shop. Habit number two, creating different spaces for different tasks. What is your current environment like? Where do you eat? Where do you work? Where do you rest? If the answer to all of these questions is the same, then you might need to reevaluate your environment. Basically, we don't want to work where we eat, or should I say, eat where we work. When possible, try to eat in a different setting. Whether you're at home or you're at the office, don't eat at the desk, and certainly don't eat whilst you're typing. You want to take those 20 to 30 minutes to truly disconnect from work, and focus on chewing your food and being fully present when you're eating. Mindlessly eating while you're at the computer has shown to interrupt digestion, and it leads to overeating. On that note, don't work while you sleep. Working in bed may seem like a good idea and be tempting, but it's actually crucial for you to start ingraining good healthy habits and setting work boundaries so you can enjoy your personal life. If you work in bed, then your sleep is more likely to be disturbed and your sleep quality is going to be significantly reduced. And you're also going to start associating bed with working. So this is basically setting you up for a recipe for disaster and is not going to help you maintain healthy habits. This also goes for watching movies or scrolling on Instagram. You want to make sure that the bedroom is for sleeping. And if you have to work late or you have to scroll on Instagram, then try to do that in the office chair, not on your pillow. Number three, stretching intervals. When we're fully immersed in a task, it can be almost impossible to pull ourselves away from the computer. And I'm very guilty of this. Sometimes a 15 minute more task turns into two to three hours. But the brain and the body need a break. The most productive people work for 52 minutes and then they take a 17 minute break away from the computer. That is oddly specific, but it is what DeskTime reports. DeskTime is a productivity app and it found that the top 10% of highest performing people worked for 52 minutes and then took a 17 minute break away from the computer. This gives you plenty of time for stretching. Now you may not have 30 minutes to dedicate towards a daily practice, but you do absolutely have 5 to 10 minutes every hour to stretch. Set a timer to go off on your phone or on your watch at 0.55 the hour. Choose 5 stretches away from your desk and then perform them for 60 seconds each. If you aren't sure what stretches to do, you can click on my previous video, 5 ultimate stretches for office workers, where I talk about desk posture and I give you 5 simple and effective moves to help address it. It may not seem like it'll make a big difference, but if you add up that 5 minutes in a 7 hour workday, that's 35 minutes a day that you're spending stretching. Habit number 4, setting boundaries. Urgency 
efficiency creates productivity. Start setting time for your tasks. Additionally, start setting boundaries. Let's say you have a task as big as analysing your competition. Instead of saying, well, today I'm going to do my research, which will take the whole working day. Try something like, I'm going to spend two hours identifying my three top competitors and I'm going to find one key weakness in their model and then I'm going to use that to make my product better and more desirable. This is known as Parkinson's Law. Parkinson's Law states that the time it takes you to complete a task is the amount of time that you're given to complete the task. So obviously we have to be somewhat realistic, we can't set a one hour task that needs to be done in four hours. But you need to start defining your time better so that you don't stretch out your tasks. Also, a big no-no is answering your work emails after hours. Respect your lunch, respect your walking breaks and your stretching breaks and start valuing your personal limits. Again, this can feel like a huge 180 turnaround, but it doesn't have to. Choose one small thing that you want to set a boundary with and see it through for three weeks. Without questioning it and then revisit it. A good example would be giving yourself a 30 minutes to check your emails and then you're going to check that at a specific time of the day, say around noon. And make sure that you don't overstep that limit because again, it's a personal boundary that you're setting for yourself. Habit number five, tucking yourself in. Of course, starting off the day with an amazing miracle morning, an energising ritual, drinking the best coffee in the world, gives you a higher chances of having a great day. But few people talk about the wind down process before bed and how that affects the quality of your sleep, which in turn affects the next morning. I'm not referring to the ideal eight to nine hours of sleep. Sometimes it's just not possible. I'm talking about aiming for 30 minutes more from what you're currently getting. No matter how busy we think we are, we can definitely be in bed 30 minutes earlier. If you only slept five hours and 30 minutes and you get in bed at 11.30 p.m., then aim for six hours of sleep by getting in bed at 11. Even if initially you're not able to fall asleep at this time, you're going to be sending signals to your body that it's time to rest. And we all know how important better sleep is for stress, for body composition, for productivity, and also for being a nice human being. So sleep deprivation never really puts anybody in a good mood. Over the course of the weeks and months, you can gradually increase your time in bed. Use the compound effect. A minimal increase of time in bed without your phone will lead to sleeping better. There's also options of blackout blinds or nightshades, trying to keep the temperature in the room cool and low, having a dim reading light if you are reading, and putting your phone on airplane mode are just some of the ways that you can help to optimise your sleep. Number six, 10 reps of something. Of course, I can't leave movement off of this list, but I do know that doing a one hour workout three to four times a week just sometimes feels impossible. If this is the case, then you can perform 10 reps of an exercise. We all have time for that. I borrowed this idea from Tim Ferriss and his morning routine. So realistically, if you're not working out at all, you won't magically start going to the gym consistently and keeping it up. But you can go from doing nothing to 10 of something. Choose a specific time of the day and do 10 reps of something. Choose your cue or your trigger and then perform the movement. An example of a good cue could be, while I'm waiting for my coffee to brew, I'm going to squeeze in 10 bodyweight squats. Or do 10 push-ups on your way to pee. You'll probably knock them out much faster. I know that, again, this might sound a bit silly, like it won't even make a dent in your overall health. But you'd be surprised by the benefits of such a small, minimal effort habit that you can do in less than 30 seconds. I actually have a client who does calf raises while she's brushing her teeth. So you can choose a movement that you enjoy. Choosing movements that you like will make you stick to the habit. Start by creating a list of 10 exercises and then tick them off at various parts of the day. Habit number seven, throwing some greens on a plate. If you are working from home, make sure that there's always a couple of salad bags in the fridge. You might not have time to put together a healthy lunch in 30 minutes, but you do have time to quickly put your hand in the fridge, grab some greens and throw them on the plate. It might be hard to plan ahead and have roast and veggies on hand, so all you have to do is go in the fridge, grab a handful of baby spinach or arugula and then throw it on your plate, even if you're eating pizza. Final thoughts. We may think that we don't have time, that real change will only come from some radical shift in our lifestyle. And right now, we just can't fit that in. So we keep on postponing the moment of taking action. But then we end up looking back at all the times that we could have taken action before, but didn't. And those moments look a lot like this moment right now. 
So I urge you to remember the compound effect. Small, smart choices plus consistency plus time equals radical difference. I took this one from the book Compound Effect by Darren Hardy and it's another great book that I recommend for zoning in on your habits and making small but mighty changes. So pick one or two of the simple habits that I've shared with you today. You don't need to go all big if you don't think it's feasible for you today. Feeling better will have a positive snowball effect and you'll soon find yourself ticking off every single number on the list. So implement these habits slowly and consciously. And that's it. I hope that you enjoyed this video and if you found value in it then please like and subscribe it for more content like this in the future. And please leave a comment below on some small habits that you started practicing and that you found helpful.